we had a request to do uh, oxidation of alcohols with chromic acids. And this one is not an alcohol, it's an aldehyde. But I want to point out this aldehyde is the intermediate in the actual reaction where an alcohol is being oxidized. A primary alcohol oxidizes twice. So this is not on this question, but before it was here, this happened with the same chemical. Same chemicals got you to here, but this is an intermediate and I'm starting you with the intermediate. So you don't have to show me the same mechanism twice. So you're either starting with an aldehyde or believe it or not, the other one starting with an alkene because you have to hydrate either one to get to the right molecule first. Please just look at the video we made where I did both of those together. And you made me pick the one where I hydrated the alkene because you were more comfortable with it. I'm just using this as an excuse to do the other one from our other day, where you had two boxes with chromic acid oxidation in each one, which is not a coincidence. Just read the study guide. That will be happening to you on uh, test day. And I'm just doing the second one because we didn't do the second one that day. And the first step is to hydrate your aldehyde. And we did a little lecture on hydration of aldehydes and I did one mechanism. And this one I'll do a slight variation and they're both acceptable. On the mechanism we did together the other day, I protonated the alkene. Here I'm gonna protonate the, alcohol, the uh, oxygen lone pair. They're both acceptable mechanisms. The only difference between the two is resonance. You'll see the resonance in our next step. I protonated the carbonyl. We're gonna be protonating other doubly bonded oxygens later in the same mechanism. Wow. So you might like this approach better. How do you get the other oxygen on there? Where's it coming from? Answer, it comes from water. And the resonance happens here. In my other version of the mechanism, I just went straight to a carbocation. This one, I didn't see the carbocation. I saw its resonance form, and then I had to resonate the electrons away. And you have an oxonium, which needs to be neutralized by your hydrogen sulfate made in step number one. And I... I'm drawing too big to keep it on the screen, but moving forward. You've got your hydrate. Look, the new blue stuff, H2O. So these, one of these alcohols on hitting the hydrate, they're not alcohols, they're hydrate, OHs, but they're gonna do the same thing as a normal alcohol with chromic acid. But chromic acid won't react with this thing until you protonate chromic acid. You must protonate chromic acid on one of the double bonds to O in this mechanism, regardless of which one you choose. So you're gonna need another sulfuric acid. I'll do this part in green up here. You need another sulfuric acid. You did regenerate sulfuric acid, you know. It's not like you ran out of it. You remade it here. And remember, protonate one of the O's that has the double bond. Do not pick another O, it's wrong. It doesn't happen. This happens because after I protonate it, it can resonate. 
See how I made these two very similar? Look, this and this are very similar now. So maybe you like this way of showing this mechanism. Because the next step, I'm also going to do the same thing. What did you do after you protonated the double bond last time? I protonated the double bond the last time, the double bond to O, and I hit it with water. Here, I'm going to hit it with one of these O's because I have to make a chromate ester. You pick one of those O's, does not matter which. Attack chromium, yeah, just like you attacked carbon here, and then resonate up to the O, and then resonate up to the O. And we're getting close to our final destination here. Let's start bringing it up here. Got an oxonium. Got this chromium thingy here. Got an OH underneath, got an OH to the left, double bond up top, OH here. Don't forget this is an oxonium, needs to be neutralized. Yeah. Needs to be neutralized by sulfate ion, which you made again. Oh, how convenient. We made it right here. Plus HO3SO lone pair minus. Comes around. Neutralize. HOCR double O. OH. OH, uh oh. O with a bond to a carbon that has an OH and an IBU. There you go. Time to dehydrate this thing. Got to make it into a chromate ester. Not a chromate ester now. This is not chromic acid around here with a C instead of an H. It's got an extra H here and an extra O over here. OH. So get your tautomerization mechanism gone using the base and the acid. It's not really a tautomerization, but the arrows sure look like it. You need both the acid and its conjugate base. Grab H, sigma becomes pi, OH leaves, you pick one, leaves is water. And you get H2O, H2O, and more importantly, you get a chromate ester, chromate ester. You got CR, double bond O up top, double bond O on the bottom. Somebody's not going to like the way I drew this. It's okay. Uh, o to a C with an I boo and an OH. Now, here's the one that students sometimes forget. That there's an H here. There's an H here that isn't in the product. Look, here's the product. Does it have an H on the carbon here? No. So you got to get to that. Um, on your exam, though, I do give you two side products. So I'm going to put them here and I'm going to go copy them to the original because they're usually there. Uh, pretend they were there all along. 
Good. So that's a big clue what you need to do. You need to get uh, these two things to be these three things. Water needs to become hydronium. Grab that purple H. Grab that purple H. Sigma becomes pi between the C and the O. This also looks like tautomerization. It does. It does. And that gets you to where you need to go. Big picture. There we have it. Maybe bigger picture. Yeah. Get this guy out of the way. And that's that's that. I'll bring it back. 